Hello and welcome back to another video. So, Fadus was kind enough to send over their latest and greatest new hot end, the Dragonfly HIC HF. HF stands for high flow, so this is like a volcano hot end equivalent. That'll be able to lay down a ton of plastic really quickly. But when I was taking a look at this thing earlier, I made a big mistake. I took it out of its packaging and tried to unscrew the hot end. The only problem is, you're not supposed to unscrew this hot end. It's some kind of bimetallic heat break. So I basically just broke it immediately. I guess I probably should have read this instruction manual first. It looks like the part that I broke is called the integrated nozzle. And I think it's just the nozzle with the heat break attached to it. So here it is and they've cleverly integrated the nozzle and the heat break. It looks like it's laser welded there at the joint. And one of the problems with this is that I don't have a laser welder at home to fix this with. So I'm going to have to get creative here. Alright, so I've mounted the heat brake into my Dremel. And this will allow me to spin it super fast so that when I put it in here, we'll be generating tons of friction. And I'm hoping it'll just kind of weld in place. I think this might have worked. So now I'll just reinstall this integrated nozzle. And then I'll try to give it a little twist, which is how I dislodged it last time. Yeah, it'll come loose again. First I'm going to apply some flux. It's a generous amount there. And I'm going to want to be careful to not put too much heat into the stainless steel. The stainless steel has a higher melting temperature, so it can handle more heat. But it's also a lot thinner, so it'll heat up faster, and there's a real chance I might melt through it. So I'm going to concentrate most of the heat down on the bottom. And I'm just covering everything generously in this brazing flux because I don't want things to start oxidizing while I'm working. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to heat it up, focusing most of the heat down on this bottom portion, and then I'll try depositing my silver solder. Basically, you just want to heat it up until you can deposit some solder on there, and it'll stick to it like a little drop of water. And then you'll heat it up even more until it flows and covers the entire surface. Alright, so you could see that the stainless steel tube still got really hot, despite me concentrating most of the heat down on the nozzle. But, it looks like we have a nice filleted joint there that should be super strong. So I won't have to worry about it coming loose anymore. Alright, time to clean this up. I'm guessing it's some kind of salt. So I applied some water to it, and now it's flaking off. So you can see here it produced a really nice fillet. Which isn't exactly what I was going for. I just wanted a tiny bit of silver solder to seep into that joint and kind of glue it together on the inside. I'm going to try and file this fillet down just to give it more of an abrupt edge, which is what you want in a heat break. Alright, so now using a process known as reverse dremeling, I'm going to use my dremel to spin my workpiece, and then just come in here with the cutoff wheel and start shaving away that fillet. You can see here this is a little bit longer than the volcano nozzle, but the volcano nozzle also heats up part of the heat break, so it's actually probably about the same length. So you can expect the same type of heating performance out of this as you can out of a volcano nozzle. Alright, now I'll put this back together, and it looks like it bottoms out, so this is working just great. And after I tighten this down, now that everything's tightened down, if I wrench on this, instead of twisting the tube inside of that nozzle, breaking that joint, now instead, I'm twisting the heat sink around that steel tube on the inside. In my opinion, this is how this part should be designed, so that you've got excess strength in that joint, instead of it being a breaking point. Because if it breaks, then your users are pretty much out of luck. Got a nice little design improvement here. That's always nice. I chose to use silver solder because it has a high melting point, somewhere between 6 and 700 degrees Celsius. If I used a typical lead tin solder, like what's used on electronics, it would melt when the hot end started heating up, and it'd just fall apart. But with this silver solder, we have a nice high strength metal to metal bond. Just make sure you don't have any plastic inside of the nozzle when you heat it up. Because that would definitely burn the plastic to a crisp and get everything clogged up in there. So it's best to attempt this on a brand new nozzle that hasn't been printed with before. Or if you can manage to clean it out by doing some cold pulls, that could work too. This brazing technique could also be used to repair a bimetallic heat break. So it's something that potentially has a lot of applications in building and repairing 3D printers. So if you're installing this on a stock Ender 3, all you need to do is take the fan shroud off, 
and then remove the stock hot end. And then you can put this upgraded hot end on. Then you'll just need to run your old wires and Bowden tube to this new piece. I'll be installing this on my Voxelab Aquila, which I recently upgraded with this direct drive extruder kit from Micro Swiss. The Dragonfly hot end is pretty much compatible with this direct drive extruder, except it's got a little less clearance where the hot end is attached. So I had to sand down the back side of the hot end a little bit, but that was relatively easy to do and just took a minute or two with some sandpaper. I almost forgot the Bowden tube here, but now I installed it and I'm just going to tighten these bolts down. This Taj Mahal print ended up looking fantastic. I've been able to get really good print quality out of this extruder hot end combo. The fact that it fits into the regular mount that Creality uses on their Ender 3 products is really nice because that means you can plug it into the, any of the Ender 3s or other similar printers. The one downside of this hot end is that if you want to try a different nozzle diameter, you can't just use the cheap one that you buy off Amazon. You have to go through Fetus and get the special one that has that heat break tube sticking out the back. Overall, I think the design is a good idea because it eliminates a common point of failure in 3D printers. You can go online and look up 3D printer blob and you'll see tons of images where filament has leaked out between the heater block and the nozzle or between the heat break and the heater block and it just forms a giant blob of 3D printed plastic and it clogs everything up and it's a real pain in the... With this design, since the heat break and the nozzle are integrated into one piece, there's no way for the plastic to leak out through those sides unless it completely falls apart. Alright, so that's about all I have to say about the Fetus Dragonfly hot end. Um, overall, I'm really impressed and I think it's capable of some really fast print speeds. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, make sure to smash the like button and if you want to see more 3D printer content like this, subscribe to my channel. Alright, thanks and I'll see you in the next video.